Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a second on my bathroom break at this lovely rest area to let you know that it's my birthday today. I am officially 41. I made it another year around the sun and to celebrate, I'm on my way to Savannah for the very first time ever to explore some of the history in the city. I have some really fun things planned and I can't wait to show them to you, so let's go. All right, we are close to Savannah now. I don't know exactly what city I'm technically in, but we are approaching the first destination of this weekend's trip. Take the next right onto Skidaway Road. I'm just gonna give you guys the disclaimer now that you're gonna be hearing a lot of gushing about trees for the next couple of days. A lot. Ooh, we're here, we're here. All right, we've made it to the first stop today. If any of you guys have seen Forrest Gump, you will recognize the view that I'm about to show you. I can't tell you how long I've wanted to see this view right here. This is from the Run, Forest, Run scene of the movie Forest Gump, for those of you that don't recognize this instantly. Man. It is just so amazing to be driving under so many incredible gorgeous trees that are just covered in resurrection fern and since it just got done raining the resurrection fern is bright green right now oh it's just so lush and just it really feels like these trees have been here for hundreds and hundreds of years you can just really oh. you guys know i'm a sucker for trees So I'm going to take a look here at this map. You see it's got the, a lot of history. And then she said the trail map is here as well. So looks like this is where we drove in and parked. And then the museum and picnic areas in front of me. The plantation house must be where we got the tickets when we first entered. All right, so I want to try to do this whole area. I heard that the um, tabby ruins and that the grave site is pretty cool. It's got a little bit about each of the points of interest. All right, let's check this out. I decided to start my hike off over by the gift shop and take that route to the Tabby Ruins first. And then I was going to continue on to the grave site, loop back around, and then head over towards the uh, Colonial Times homestead area with the other structures. I was so relieved it had stopped raining by now and everything was so lush and green from the recent rains.
And here you can see I'm approaching the first lookout with a scenic vista to take in. It really was a beautiful trail the whole way through and not very crowded at all since it was during the week. So I really appreciated having most of the path to myself at times. I really thought this park did a great job of having tons of signage and postings and audio supplemental materials to kind of give you a real thorough background and history of the place. And it really made you envision and visualize how life would have been back then, at least me anyway. After spending some time at the ruins, I started making my way over towards the historic grave site there. But with plenty of stops to appreciate the views, of course. I highly recommend using the trail map provided to you when you get your ticket. It really comes in handy because it labels each of the sites that you pass by and gives you a little bit more information on it. These are the final three landmarks that we're getting ready to explore now. Like everything else here, I found this part really interesting as well. They had a replicated herb and vegetable garden so you could see what types of things that were being grown back then. And it really wasn't all that different from what you would expect in a garden nowadays. Is it just me or when you guys go visit places like this, do you always picture yourself living in these types of things and at these times that you're reading about? Because I know every time I go to places like this, I always picture how life would have been for me in these places. And it's just so fascinating to me. I just love these living history type sites.
here we're exploring what the colonial village would have been like with the blacksmith, all of the different types of buildings and things they used for cooking and living. But as much as I wanted to stay, I couldn't dally because it was time to go on to the next destination, which I was, if possible, even more excited about. And that was Wormslow Historic Site, our first stop of the day. We are going to start making our way over to another place that I have been dying, no pun intended, to explore for years as well. Turn left onto Skidaway Road. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto Wadley Avenue. Bonaventure Cemetery is probably one of the most famous places to visit in Savannah. It's certainly the most well-known cemetery there. While it has been a cemetery since 1846, it was originally known as Evergreen Cemetery, and it was established inside the grounds of the original Bonaventure Plantation. Once it became apparent that the existing cemeteries in the city were all nearing capacity and something would need to be done. Purchased by the city of Savannah in 1907, it is now one of five cemeteries that are currently owned by the city today and it happens to be the largest in the city as well. Originally around 60 acres, it has expanded today to around 103 acres, and in fact, you can still be interred there today. You're able to look up the fees and the requirements online. This is the section of the cemetery known as Jewish Circle and also has the Holocaust Memorial. As I've already noted and as you can see by the footage, the azaleas were in peak bloom and absolutely breathtaking. In fact, that's actually why I timed my first visit to Savannah to be for my birthday trip, because I had read that peak azalea blooms were anywhere between early March to mid to end of April, although everything I read said that mid-March is typically the best time to visit to see the azaleas, and Bonaventure Cemetery is known for their tons and tons and tons of blooms, and it was just I mean, the footage just doesn't do it justice. It was absolutely incredible. The cemetery is open every day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You are not allowed to be in there after dark, but there is no charge for admission anytime, so you're able to go any day that you'd like. I would say if you are planning a visit here to at least at a very minimum allow for two hours to get a good idea of what the cemetery has to offer although you could really easily spend an entire day in there strolling around and 
taking in all of the sights and reading all of the graves and seeing the statues and still not even come close to seeing everything in a day's time. Personally, I plan to go back and devote an entire day from open to close there for my next visit because I just couldn't get enough of it. I personally spent around four hours this time, but that was only due to time constraints. If I hadn't have needed to leave and start heading towards camp, I would have definitely stayed until close. And here we are approaching the grave of little Gracie Watson, which is one of the most well-known grave sites in the cemetery. I have to be honest with you all, I sort of dropped the ball at this point. I had gotten so wrapped up in my explorations that I forgot I was supposed to be documenting and filming everything, so I did leave some parts of the cemetery out that I explored, unfortunately. But it is highly worth the visit yourself so that you can experience it all. For myself, I personally chose to park at the front near where I picked up my free map and then tore the entire grounds on foot or well, as much as I could cover in a day. Um, but you do have the option to tour the grounds as a driving tour as well. You're able to take your vehicle on several main roads throughout the cemetery grounds so that you can pull off and park in certain areas and get out and explore a little more if you want, but do the bulk of your tour from the car and just kind of take a scenic drive through, which would be absolutely lovely as well. I wanted to be able to kind of wander aimlessly through the little side paths. So I just decided to explore as much as I could in the time that I had allowed on foot. And unfortunately, my time passed way too soon and it was time to start heading back to the van. Unfortunately, all too soon, my first day in Savannah was over and I was checking into my first night at camp, which you will be seeing in a future video as well. I can't wait to show you the rest of my Savannah tour where I will be exploring all over the historic downtown part of the city on foot and by trolley. And as always, I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you're not already, I would love it if you would subscribe so you don't miss any of my future adventures, and I will see you next time. Bye!